Jumping into this whole TF2 blender thing, you gotta start somewhere. And I say it should be with the TF2 trifecta. Spawn mercenaries, clothe them, paint those clothes, weaponize them, pose their faces, feed them. The TF2 trifecta is an asset manager for my ports. Why mine? Well, they're the best. I'll show you through the four subtools and then how to install the assets or the ports that it uses. Wardrobe is simple. You search for a cosmetic and then you spawn it. Jungle Jersey. If you have a mercenary selected, the item that you do spawn will be automatically bound, unless you hold shift. You can make an item, use its blue materials by enabling blue team. Having a cosmetic selected will make the paints window appear where you can paint the active material either through a color dial or through the various paints in Team Fortress 2. Drably Olive. Here's a little tip for you about adding killstreak sheens. It's very easy. Go to the add node menu, search for killstreak sheen, and put it in between these two nodes. And you have a killstreak sheen. You can set the time between each glow or fade. You can set the speed at which it glides across the model. And of course, you also have a separate sheen colors node group, allowing you to use all eight different sheen colors in Team Fortress 2. Merc Deployer lets you spawn two types of rigs, a new Rigify rig, and a legacy in-game rig, which you can use to import taunts. As seen here, he's laughing. <laughs> Spawning with in-game models disabled will force the mercenaries to use the higher quality SFM body groups, but be warned, these have a tendency to clip through the cosmetics. Here's what it looks like on the in-game model, nothing wrong. Using it on the SFM body groups will cause clipping issues. There are four official sets of rigs that you can use with Merc Deployer, but I will get to that in a bit. Because these new rigs are Rigify rigs, they have a bunch of different properties that you can mess with, such as hiding bone layers, switching between IK and FK on the limbs. Different bones have different properties. Something neat you might find is that you can select all these orange sticks and scale them down to curl the fingers inwards. The eyes target these little trapezoids up here, parented to this cross. You can select them individually to scale the eyes. Now, by far, my favorite thing to do with these rigs is to select the face, add a new shape key, set it to the max value, and just mush it around. <laughs> so, you know, if ever you're in need of a strong emotion that the regular face posing can't, uh, manifest, <laughs> you got, you got this. And of course, the best brush to use is the smooth brush. <laughs> he looks like a mosquito, a mosquito. I gotta save that. Now, onto the official rigs. The official rigs that you can use with this are Mine, Eccentrics, That Lazy Artists, and the Ragdoll Rigs. But with that last one, I think I have to make that its own video, so I'll just touch on these three. Now, fundamentally, they're all the same, they just differ when it comes to posing the face. Mine takes a more traditional approach, in that it mimics SFM and Gmod, so if you're an animator coming from either of those, this might be more suited to you. Eccentrics takes a more industrial approach. It uses control points scattered across the face to pose the face. And it is a really fun way to pose the face. If this is your thing, go for it. Get Eccentrics rigs. That Lazy Artist takes a more old school approach, where it uses sliders off the side of the head to pose the face. Now these ones aren't labeled as well, but you can select one and see what it does in the top right corner. It says right smile, so sliding this up makes him smile on the right side. Only mine and that lazy artist's rigs have these facial presets you can use to lazily pose the face for mouth sounds or emotion. Bone Merge lets you attach cosmetics to a mercenary. Why is that so shiny? Doesn't even have to be cosmetics, you can bone merge different armatures together and make an abomination, What? Attaching with hierarchical influence applies the influence going from the top to the bottom of the bone tree, as you can probably tell here. That was only implemented to try to fix whatever that is, but it only really works on the first attachment. Attaching with scale with enabled, scales with. To bind a facial cosmetic to the face, select the cosmetic, then the face, then choose Bind Face Cosmetic. Then you can pose it through the facial presets, with no clipping issues. Unfortunately, that only works for my and TLA's rigs, but let me show you a fast workaround that you can use on all rigs and be able to pose the cosmetics through the flex controllers. Add the cosmetic, then we're going to separate all the parts that are supposed to move. Select this newly separated object, add a surface D4 modifier, and 
bind them to the face. Now we can go ahead and pose the face, and yes, the cosmetic seems to be following pretty well. Again, that is not limited to only Eccentrics rigs. You can do that on mine or TLAs and be able to pose them through the flex controllers. Sometimes an item won't sit right, and something you can try to do is attempt to fix cosmetic. Face posing works like how it does in SFM or Gmod, but unfortunately, this tool only works with my rigs. But these two buttons up here, Optimize Merc and Restore Merc, are relevant and applicable to those two other rigs. To summarize it really quick, the face posing works through hundreds of drivers on hundreds of shape keys. It's going to take a toll on performance. So if you're focused on animating, you optimize the Merc to give yourself the most performance. Doing so will completely remove all facial functionality. But once you're ready to work on animating on the face, restore Merc, and all facial functionality will be restored. I recommend seeking out other ways to squeeze out performance. I know it's not efficient, but other implementations of face posing just didn't work as well. Anyways, yes, face posing works like how it does in SFM or Gmod. It supports weighted stereo flexing, so if you want to pose one side of the face more than the other, you can do that by shifting this LR slider. This diamond up here will hide the keyframe status on the flex controllers, which might help with UI lag. This circle toggles auto keyframing to save your changes. If I turn it off, the changes that I made here will not be saved. This diamond inserts a keyframe on all sliders that can be seen in this list on the current frame. This button refreshes the face, which I don't think you'll have to use this often, and this back arrow resets the face. You have a pose library to save and load configurations for the face, and out of the box it comes with a bunch of presets taken from SFM. You can use these to do a simple lip sync with the flex controllers. The face randomizer randomizes the face, and you can lock sliders in the lock list to prevent them from getting randomized. Eyebrows aren't moving as much, jaw isn't opening. Yeah. Okay, let's install the add-on now. Obviously, the first step is to get the add-on, so get the latest version, install the add-on, and look for the zip file. Now, when you install the add-on, you might get this message, Auto Run Python Scripts is currently turned off. Now, I recommend having this enabled because it guarantees full functionality of the rigs or the mercenaries every single time you use them and reopen a file. The only thing is you have to be precautious of what blend files you open and where you get them from because it will auto run Python scripts. So if you're generally not an idiot online, uh, Go ahead and enable that. <laughs> now, there are two ways to install the assets. The easy way, which is through the add-on itself, and the less convenient way, which is through a web browser. All it is is less convenient. The easy way is done by going to the scene properties, which is this cone and two circles icon. Go down to the TF2 trifecta and find install TF2 items. Set a TF2 items path. I already have one, then install TF2 items. It's possible the download failed, uh, might not work. The TF2 trifecta will validate the files once the download is complete. So once it has finished downloading the files, Blender will freeze for a few minutes to validate them and scan them for items to spawn. It's recommended to not do anything intensive while the TF2 trifecta is doing it, so don't, don't do anything intensive. We're going to download a standard set of rigs and OK. Look at that, baby, it's working. Mmm, that's so cool. Mmm! Man, that's cool. Okay, it's finished. Please wait for the files to be validated. We can watch the progress through the console. There we go. Everything finished. We have successfully installed the add-on and the assets that it uses. We can search for cosmetics. We have a set of standard rigs we can use. Very cool. But for you unlucky few, that might not work. That's probably Google Drive telling you no and to get the assets through a browser instead. Which again, it's only less convenient. It's not that bad. In the scene properties in the TF2 trifecta, we can open the TF2 items folder. Then we can download resources all the way down to Weapons 3. Anything with an exclamation mark is optional. You don't need to get it. In this case, I'm just gonna get the bare necessities. While that's downloading, we can get ourselves a set of rigs. Get mine, for example. We can just go ahead and extract them. Now, when you download these, it's going to come out in a split.zip file, which, if you don't extract the right way, can actually cause corruption in the blend files, which is a headache you don't want to deal with. I recommend extracting them with WinRAR or 7-zip. Both work, I'm sure. I have win. I have WinRAR. But you can't. You win. You seven yip and get. Nah, dude. 
cry about it, man. Okay, we can copy our TF2 items path, set our TF2 items folder, and scan it. You can open the console to watch the progress in case you are impatient. Oh, it's done. Very nice. Now we can add our set of rigs, go to the rigs we just extracted, and add the folder. You can add more than one set of rigs. You can have all of them if you'd like. But we installed it correctly. We can go to the wardrobe and search for cosmetics. We can spawn mercenaries. All works. Now before I end, there is one thing I need to make sure you know. Use the standard view transform. It'll just make everything look more TF2. It'll make it have its TF2 look. I don't know. You can tell the difference switching from AGX to standard. It's not as bad as filmic, <laughs> thankfully, but standard. Standard's your best bet when it comes to making it look like TF2. All right, that's the TF2 trifecta. That's how to use it. That's how to install it. Oh, and be sure to tag me in whatever you make with this. I'd, I'd love to see it. All right, that's it. Goodbye. Thank you.